My name is John Schultz, and as I said, I'm here to speak about Canvas in Node.js. Um, real briefly about me, I'm currently at Include in DC. It's a web consultant company, uh, design firm, but doing mostly web consulting. Before that, I was at Omni TI, which is also another web consultant company. Um, I, while at Omni TI, we released a monitoring service called Circonus, and I did a lot of work with charting there. That's part of where some of the stuff came from. And you can find me on Twitter at JFSIII. So why are we doing Canvas on Node? Um, it's to replace either this script tag, which is loading your library and then instantiating it, or an iframe with image source equals. And that still normally gets you to, but why are you doing Canvas in Node? And the best way is to give you a use case. So we had made some Canvas-based charts for a customer, and they really liked them, and they wanted to put the charts in their wiki. Canvas-based charts need a browser or a document, and iframe is a good way to do that. You know, just you would link to whatever your normal content is and put, you know, Chrome equals false or something along those lines, unframed. Problem is, wikis don't allow iframes, or most don't. So I really, really wanted to make this work. I mean, it seemed like a completely valid use case to take these charts we had worked on and get them to work at their uh, company. And it was a compliment. They liked our stuff enough that they wanted to share these items within the company. So I did a little looking, and I did find a project called Rhino Canvas, but it is, it looks dead in the water. I haven't seen any activity since 06. So I made a request on Twitter, just some of the people I could think about. Basically you get, what are you talking about? It's image, why are you doing an image on the server? Or specifically, why are you doing Canvas, which is clearly a browser item on the server. Um, I did talk to some other people and Cairo was mentioned. Cairo does SVG, PNG, um, PDF generation, does a lot of stuff. It's got hooks for PHP, Perl, a whole lot of other languages. So I thought that if I had the wherewithal, I could just re-implement the Canvas API in C, but that wasn't the most exciting thing to me. The good news is, I'm serious, three days after I figured out that I would use Canvas, I mean uh, Cairo, TJ has some post about how he's almost done with no Canvas. So thankfully, um, a couple weeks after that, Learn Boost and TJ released Node Canvas, and does exactly what I was trying to do. And it's Canvas API compatible. So you get all the stuff you expect. You get move to, line to, stroke, fill, fill rectangle, everything you expect out of a Canvas instance. And it gives you a couple other items, which um, two of which are really important, one of which is really important to me. Create PNG stream and two buffer. So I'm going to go through a couple examples. Um, this example is a little bit trimmed down from the one that's on the new Canvas site. And notice here, I mean, I made a note in the comments, the only difference between a typical Canvas script is that one after require Canvas, and then really it's your instantiation, um, that instead of saying Canvas equals document create new Canvas, Canvas.height equals Canvas.width equals, you just pass the height and width in the constructor. From there on, you write create Canvas like you normally would. Um, here I'm doing two data URL, which is standard method. And that gives you, you know, big data URI, which would produce woot. Uh, here's gradients. And again, the only two items that, are, that change here require canvas and new canvas. Everything else is the same. This is the image that it generates. Is that a typo that you left off of? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was doing some editing, yeah. It's not that magical. Um, I was changing a plane around sizes. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's definitely a typo. Um, a graph or whatever, a spark line. Similar item. This is all what you would do in Canvas that you were doing on the client side. So that gets me close. Um, it means it's possible for me to write Canvas in Node. The real issue is, though, for me, I, can't, I still can't use Flot over on the server side. Um, I don't want to spend my time writing a charting library. There's already one out there that works. In particular, the customer liked our graphs. We had made some new data visualizations we had done, you know, customizing of the colors, whatever. I didn't feel like doing that work again. So, um, Flot uses jQuery, jQuery uses the DOM. So you have to find a way to get the DOM onto the server. And that, thanks to uh, Elijah, can be in JS DOM, is possible. JS DOM, which I don't know if you saw Elijah's talk this morning, but it's a way to get the DOM. It's a common JS implementation of the DOM. Uh, so why, why exactly do you need the DOM for, so the way- jQuery, I'm sorry, go ahead. So the way we did it, uh, we run plot on the server side, and we basically bootstrapped a couple jQuery functions 
And then the only problem is that for some reason Flaw uses DOM for the labels, mm -hmm. but there's a project that implements labels in Canva. Correct. So um, then you don't need the JS DOM over. I'd love to get that. I actually was talking to TJ about it. I was trying to... I a project called Drawback. So what it does is um, basically be able to share the same code uh, in the client and the server as far as what's actually doing the rendering of the chart. Mm -hmm. And then for the server side adds hooks. So for example, if you want to get a print view of the chart, it's going to execute the same code and also load additional plugins. Okay. Like for example, uh, rendering the text in the canvas. Gotcha. So we can go into that afterwards, but what Guillermo was saying was that they have done some work to make to where you don't even need JS DOM to have jQuery run. I did, like I said, I was talking to TJ about it and I couldn't get a hold of that. So I found, you'll see in a minute here, a way that while it does require loading some additional stuff, it was also the minimum amount of work that was required for me. Um, so JS DOM is incredible and it currently gives you DOM level one and two browser support. And with that DOM, I can now get jQuery to run on the server. Here's an example. It's the same, same thing that uh, Elijah had this morning. Just get JS DOM. Uh, in this particular case, you're loading Node.js.org. And then going to inject jQuery. I made a note that that is production jQuery. When it's ready, it runs jQuery against that content and counts the number of um, anchors, the number of links that are there. So you can do screen scraping in this example of JS DOM. So patching plot was really simple. Because that Canvas API is API compatible, all I really had to do in Flot was just go to the place where that Canvas was created and make a change to it. Um, just did a branching. There was one other thing, which is that Flot in particular wants a width and a height, uh, which it grabs from the DOM element. So since there wasn't a width and a height or jQuery wasn't able to determine those, I made it, um, I gave it the config option of giving it a width and a height. So technically, I'd add a couple more lines. However, that com that's a complaint that's common in Flot is that I want to tell you how uh, the dimensions of this image. Perhaps you've got a div or something that is off screen at the moment. So if it's hidden initially, Flot would see that as 0, 0 and wouldn't render it anyway. So you can't pre-render. So that's something that's coming in a newer version of Flot. It's, I needed it in particular for this, but eventually that means it's one less item you'd have to patch. I do have the patch. This is from 06. I've got that available as a gist. I haven't made those commits yet. I did post the, the patches are available, and I worked with them um, when we did the GitHub fork. So I've been having discussions with them. It's not committed yet, and that's actually one of the things I'm trying to uh, that I'll get committed in there. So I definitely that would be the ideal is to not have to patch anything, just get it committed because it really it's completely compatible. I can run a client side or, or server side, and it's fine. So. Here's an example. Um, so I've got a domain jsno.de, which is where I play with Node stuff. And um, so this example, let's see if I've got it. All right, so this is basically just taking a JS DOM example um, and converting it or whatever, adding a couple things in. So in this example, require JS DOM, give it a base DOM to work with. Um, again, production jQuery code my patched flot, and then here's one of the, there's two plugins that, um, as Gamer was saying, the only real remaining challenge with flot is that it renders labels in absolutely positioned divs. So they're not a part of the canvas, and when you go to do actions like two data URL or whatever, you now don't have them. So all you would have is a canvas with lines and fills, but nothing to say the current value is 50, or this is pertaining to CPU usage or whatever. So there's, existing Canvas plugins, I mean, um, Flot plugins to get text in. This is a totally unpatched um, Flot plugin. Actually, um, I guess I'll get to it later, but that will be going away. The need for that is going away soon. And then when it's ready, this is just generating data. I would have to do this if I were showing you how to use Flot, just make some random data. The only things that are of any real uh, change are the height and width uh, that I mentioned earlier. And for that particular plugin, it takes a canvas text argument to grid, give it some information about how, what the uh, font is to be. And then I set clickable and hoverable to false. Those are, again, normal flat options. There's no need to apply any sort of listeners since I'm going to be returning a static image. And after that, um, a couple aliases here, just so that I don't have to write window.jQuery or window.dollar in my code. Create a shim div. This signature right here, plot equals plot. Div data and options, that's a completely standard uh, flock call. 
get canvas is a normal flop method. Um, here I'm getting the node canvas back, which has those additional methods. I happen to define where I want to do this output. And then you create a write stream, um, more importantly, create a PNG stream. And then as it gets data, write to that. That created um, JSDOM.png, which is back here. Um, I think I can do. And so, oh, and you know, by the way, uh, here we go. Uh, so that's what was actually being written out. All right. So going a little bit deeper, um, I've got JS node, JS node slash flot, which is just a way, again, for me to experiment with stuff. Um, I want to be able to do image source equals something and get data back. So you can, on this particular whatever instance I have, I can actually pass parameters in via the query string. Probably not what you want to do in production, but it's possible. So in this case, I can give it a JSON object or just options or just data. So if you give it a list of options, that'll give us actually. Yeah. And oh, I don't know. Right. I have an issue with that occasionally, where those don't get there. But that is live data. Um, so I do use one DOM. In that earlier example, I was always doing require, setting up an empty DOM, writing to it. There's really no need to do that. So that's a JSNOD slash flots and express app. So what I do is when I create, when the server is created, I do this real basic script injection where, whoops. script injection where, same things you saw earlier, um, I just load up the patched flot and the text um, plugin that I need just to have those there, and that does it one time. I then assign window.canvas to that canvas, that uh, node canvas item, and same thing I was doing before, global.jQuery equals window.dollar, so I can use those later on in the script. So the idea there is that I have one DOM that and I'm, I think I go to next, that when I'm actually writing the image back, all I ever do is create a jQuery item, and it's always dealing with that one document. So I'm not um, making multiple documents or making a new one each time, because it just seemed wasteful, and it also happens to work here. So this is render flawed image, which is what is used to re render that um, JSNOD slash flot. I happen to get some data, create data like you saw before. I'm just getting rid of that. Placeholder equals jQuery, I don't even actually, in this example, I don't even throw it a div. This seems to be enough to allow it to work. Um, again, the standard plot uh, or flock call signature, no canvas, just to remind me that I've got a enhanced API. And now I make two buffer, which is what gives you this, that binary image. And then I just, in my response, I give that image back. And I'm really, I haven't done enough testing to determine what effect placeholder has, but I actually decided just to delete placeholder because it couldn't hurt. I don't know. It's working. It might clean memory up for me. I haven't been able to put this thing under enough load to determine if that has any effect or not. So wrapping up, um, advantages, big thing, image works everywhere. Uh, I explained to you we had people that wanted a wiki. I couldn't do an iframe on that. Um, you've got older de browsers or even current browsers that don't support Canvas. Mobile is another one. So, or if it's an either a older or just lower powered, I guess through age or form factor, um, they might not have support for Canvas. Everything's got support for image, the most things you care about. Code reuse, and this was key with me, we had already done work into getting these charts to look the way that I wanted, and I wanted to quickly get something up that would allow us to use this for this client. Um, so that, that was key for me. Performance. Images, less burden. Uh, again, I mentioned lower power devices. Instead of me giving a data structure to the device, having the device constructed and render it, I'm just giving binary image data back. So there's definitely a performance gain on that uh, for some items. Privacy is huge um, in the monitoring service I was mentioning. We had some people that just wanted, they wanted to share their charts, but they wanted to show the relative change or relative effect. They didn't want to show actual membership, 
database queries, whatever it was. And if I was just giving a JSON data structure back, you can see that in the net request. Um, it's possible to obfuscate it, but you're one way or another, you're going to get it. It's JavaScript that's coming across. Here, I can make all the changes I want on the server, determine what I want the person to see, and return a completely opaque image, or as opaque as I want it to be, image back to the client. Caching. Uh, now that you've got a standard HTTP request, you can cache it like you would anything else. Um, let's say you've got something like sales, and you know that if I'm given a start and an end date, and they're both in the past, new sales aren't going to have occurred, put a far futures header on it, and you can cache it as aggressively as you would anything else, or as you would that type of data elsewhere. Um, on a side note, I mean, if you've tried to ever cache XHR, if you've ever dealt with a 304 of an XHR, it's really problematic. Um, so 304 says the data hasn't changed. Ask the server, can you give me the data? The server says, use what you have. The XHR object gives you back empty. There's no way to get the data that you did have before. So when you try to do the right thing using XHR, if you give a 304 back, it's, it's uh, debilitating or it's uh, really depressing that you can't use that. So this allows me to get around that as well. Text, um, one of the benefits, I guess, of having a single platform, you know what you have installed on your server, so you can use a certain font. Disadvantages, I think the first one being, I'm now bringing load from a client back. You know, the nodes are going from a node back to the hub, so you are taking on some burden. But I think you can offset that by some of the things I mentioned, caching, and et cetera. Um, it's an image. A lot of fun stuff can be done in Canvas, mouse over tool tips expand, zoom, I can't do any of that with an image. So and here, clearly that's gone. And it's another piece of technology in your infrastructure. You might not be using Node already. Um, again, that's not too terrible. I mean, you can make a request that goes to a certain port or to a certain URL and just send that through so it's only being run. Uh, that Only that little bit's being run by Node. You probably have your own image server anyway that's doing something similar. Or if you're doing server-side image generation, you'd already have that. Memory. As I said, I haven't dealt with um, enough to know. I'm not seeing it, but I know there's been, there was some question from Elijah if I was running into it. When I showed him what I did, he said I should be fine, but this is not thoroughly vetted, so I'm not exactly sure what people would run into with it. Don't know of any others. Like I said, this hasn't been, I didn't get a chance to implement this at the monitoring company at Zirconis, um, so I'm not quite sure. Basic questions, can't you do this with GD or Image Magic? You can, but I wanted the same charts that I already had. I like the client side charting libraries a lot better. I think there's a lot more development actually going on in that. So it's a lot more, uh, lot, there's a lot more for me to choose from. And what I like is if I find something I like, I can just do basically a patch like I showed you before, go find where it creates Canvas, change that little bit out, and theoretically that's it, or do a little bit more digging, but it's really not that much work to get a client side library to work on the server side. Oh, I'm sorry, performance that I mentioned. Not really sure. Some Flot specific items. I actually didn't realize until yesterday that Flot 07 is out. It came out about a month ago. So I actually did a patch. Um, and then with the internet issues today, I couldn't make my changes over. But it's a similar patch. It's really simple. Just the line numbers changed enough that I couldn't apply the same one. Uh, Flot 08, so the, S the version that's in SVN right now, is doing all the rendering, or at least doing the label rendering in text. So you don't even need that plugin. I don't, they're the tick label um, rendering in text. I don't think they have labels down yet, but that's definitely where they're moving. So you would just specify font, size, fill, et cetera, and options. And that would be completely standard, which means the need for that plugin is gone. I did, um, Elijah mentioned Node Flot. I'm pretty sure he's talking about me. There isn't a Node Flot project. I don't know if there really should be. Ideally, I'd just commit the stuff back. It's a patch file. I'm not trying to fork, maintain any of this stuff. So hopefully, I will submit these. If for whatever reason I can't get them worked in, and, um, I'll make a project, which is just going to be a patch file. Right now, I've just got them up as guests. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. I haven't. No, I haven't. Sorry. The question was, have I run Raphael JS? I have not. Um, Roth exactly. So Raphael's SVG. Which means that, now I did hear during Brock's rap, and there's, that I did hear Raphael shout it out. So I believe it exists. Um, somebody should be able to do the same thing because Cairo, like I said, also has SVG support. So if somebody was similarly motivated, or if Node Raphael doesn't do what we think it does, you should be able to do that. Any other questions? So, anyone knows it's a server side mobile?
Thank you. What's that? Does anyone know if there's a server-side WebGL? I don't have it. The question was, is there a server-side WebGL? There's a couple's the answer from Guillermo. There is uh, one that imports OpenGL on top of VA directly. And then there is one that's in trying to implement the WebGL API. I'm sorry, you're right. So these said there's a couple. That's right. I had seen the one. Okay. Thank you for your, for your time.